Hello my dear students, very good morning to all. Hope you are all doing good. Thank you so much for the excellent response you have shown for the previous video lecture. Today we are going to see about the most interesting topic, solid waste management. Solid waste management is very important because in our daily activities we are producing tons and tons of garbages and solid waste. So it is our responsibility to make our mother earth free from solid waste and making it aesthetic and hygienic. Let us move to the topic. Solid waste management is nothing but the collection of waste produced and the treatment of the waste and disposing the waste according to its nature because it has served its purpose or is no longer useful. We know that tons and tons of waste are produced from industries and domestic usages and improper disposal of these waste create dangerous unsanitary conditions and it leads to pollution and also outbreaks of vector borne diseases. Vector borne diseases are nothing but diseases spread by rodents like rat, guinea pig and other insects. So managing solid waste is a mandatory one and it will create very good environment to all the living beings. The main source of solid waste are industries and domestic utilizations. So industries produce toxic metals and all hazardous waste. So these hazardous waste and toxic metals severely affects the soil characteristics and they will reduce the productivity of the soil to greater extent. Similarly, toxic waste can get into the groundwater and pollute the groundwater. Initially, the toxic waste produces severe damages to the surface water available and then they will percolate into the soil and affects the groundwater also. So simply throwing solid waste creates one type of pollution and in some other cases burning of the industrial and domestic waste creates harmful gases like nitrogen oxides, sulfur oxides and any other harmful substances. They are very much hazardous to the human beings and all other living beings and creates severe air pollution also. And on the top of that the solid waste thrown or burning creates very unpleasant condition or spoils the aesthetic value of the area. So the processes involved in solid waste management are waste generation, collection of waste, transportation of waste, segregation and disposal techniques. We will see this in detail in the next slide. Here you can see generation of solid waste means we are not going to generate the solid waste but the solid waste generated from the industries and also from domestic utilizations. So it is not possible to treat all the solid waste at that point itself. So we have to collect the solid waste from all the sources. So there may be many sources. So we have to collect all the waste from all the sources. And we have to transport the collected waste from all the places to a particular place which is actually designed to treat the waste. Then the transported waste is stored in a particular area with proper hygienic conditions and the stored waste are now segregated based on the chemical composition, hazard potential, physical nature and also biodegradability. For example, there may be waste which are dry or wet. There may be waste which are biodegradable, non-biodegradable. So we have to treat each and every waste in a different technique. So we have to segregate the waste. After segregation, there are so many disposal methods available like incineration, sanitary landfill and composting. So this is the entire solid waste management flowchart. It will help you in understanding the entire process. The solid waste management involves the following steps or stages. 
the first one is before disposing or discarding the waste we may go to the 3R principle that is reduce a reuse and recycle principle then if these 3R principle is not suitable then we will move to the discarding or disposing waste principle so the 3R in that first one is reduce so instead of purchasing so many or large quantities of raw materials we must precisely purchase the raw materials and we should reduce the usage of raw materials so that we can reduce the generation of waste also so instead of reusing recycling discarding etc if we reduce at the raw material stage itself it is possible to reduce the generation of waste so the first one is reduce the raw material usage the second or is reuse of used or waste materials so we are using many materials in our daily life and instead of throwing it simply into the dustbin as garbage we should make it use it for some other purposes for example here you can see the water bottles are used for planting some plants and the used shoes and some other products are also shown here which may be utilized for some other purposes instead of throwing simply now if we can't use again we can go for recycling to make it as some other product we, go, we will go for recycling or reprocessing so it is nothing but recovery of resources uh, it making it useful from the discarded items so the purpose of the process is to reduce energy loss consumption of new material and reduction of landfills so by recycling we can uh, make the consumption of new material reduced and we can reduce also landfills for example the aluminium cans glass bottles which are always recycled and we can recycle cellulose from used papers like that from the kitchen waste we will make many fuel pellets which can be used as a fuel in burning so any 3R principle is not applicable we will go for disposing or discarding solid waste so there are three main methods available in disposing of solid waste that is the sanitary landfill incineration and composting so we are saying here as sanitary landfill not simply landfill so which means that the landfill should be highly hygienic and protected so this is the most common strategy utilized by the municipals to handle solid waste and the refuse should be carefully deposited in a sanitary landfill a sanitary landfill is nothing but a disposal site that is carefully selected designed constructed and operated to protect the environment and public health so if we fill the garbages or solid waste simply in the earth surface it will create so many problems like rodents foul smell and uh, pathogenic organisms to be spread so like that so many things will happen so we must protect the landfill with guidelines already given so the buried waste never comes in contact with surface water or ground water it is mandatory the waste what we are actually burying in landfills should not come to contact with surface water or ground water and one one more thing i want to point out is the landfills are required to have an impermeable liner or barrier at the bottom so the impermeable liner should not allow the waste to mix with the water or soil here you can see a picture in which the black line is nothing but the landfill liner which is impermeable which does not allow any of the substances to pass through this layer and the waste which actually produces huge amount of gases during decomposition is allowed with a pipeline which makes the gases to come out so here you can see uh, the pipeline is given at the center through which the gases produced is escape so that the impermeable membrane is not damaged due to the pressure produced by the gas and uh, 
about three meters depth it is necessary to make the landfill uh, digs and every day we have to check the landfill and cover with the soil in order to prevent foul smells and uh, production of insects or rodents and wind blown litters etc so the landfills are made with particular distance and so many landfills are available at a particular site incineration we all know that incineration is nothing but burning in a very huge fire so burning is a very effective method to reduce the volume and weight of solid waste landfill requires uh, so many days to recover but in incineration we will reduce the volume of the uncompact waste by 90 percent only the ash will be getting as residue and some other unburned materials like glass metals and some other solid materials so the 100 percent volume of the waste is reduced to 90 percent and only 10 percent is remaining as waste so it is a hygienic way of uh, disposing because during incineration all the pathogenic organisms will die and no unhygienic condition will be produced during this and one more positiveness of the incineration is production of electricity so during burning we will get excess heat the heat is utilized in production of the steam and the steam runs the steam turbine which in turn makes the generator to work and electricity is produced the same electricity may be utilized in the incineration process and the last one is very much important that is uh, composting so we all know that composting is a very good natural phenomenon which helps in the biodegradability of the kitchen waste or domestic waste so during this process the waste are dried and mixed up with the soil and we have to wait for few days then after that the biodegradable matters will get degraded and humus or compost is formed so this humus or compost is used as organic manures or fertilizers in the place of synthetic fertilizers so this will helps in the biodegradability of kitchen waste and also produces huge quantity of compost also so it will again makes the earth healthy so there is one more method called vermicomposting in which we will use earth forms so it is another type of compost which is rich in essential nutrients for the plant growth so thank you so much for watching this excellent video i hope you have learned about the solid waste management so this is a simple outline about the solid waste management uh, you can refer so many things about that Thank you so much. Have a nice day.